So DuckDB just released a local UI and we're going to explore that in this video. Now this local UI is going to make it much easier to explore your database and it also comes with the ability to use interactive notebooks to define SQL queries and to see the results of executing those queries. You can also view table and column metadata and you can organise your work into different interactive notebooks and that's going to be very useful in development. So we're going to explore the DuckDB local UI in this video. This is a new release, it's just came out at the time of recording here as you can see on the 12th of March 2025. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. Thank you very much to everyone that's contributed to that. And I'm going to add this video to this data engineering playlist that I'm building up at the moment. So let's get started. We're going to go to the local UI page. Now, DuckDB includes a command line interface, and that provides a convenient way to run SQL queries from a terminal window. And there are third party tools that offer more sophisticated UIs. Now, of course, the problem with using the CLI is that it can be cumbersome for working with long SQL queries and the data exploration tools are limited. And the rationale here is that using DuckDB through a UI should be as simple as using the CLI, and now it is. Now what we're going to do to start with is install the DuckDB CLI. That's going to be very simple. I'll leave a link to this page below the video, and you can install it in different ways. You want to select the command line environment, and you can select whatever platform you're on. I'm on Windows, and that's going to give me this .zip file at the bottom. You can download that, and I've got that .zip file here on my machine. What I'm going to do is extract that, and I'm going to select a location for that. And once that extraction is complete, you can see the DuckDB command line application here. And we can also delete the .zip file here as well. So we have the single DuckDB executable in this directory. Now we can open up a terminal where we have this directory open. And if you want, you can also add this directory to your system path. And that way you don't need to navigate to the terminal whenever you want to execute the DuckDB executable. But what I'm going to do is just execute the DuckDB command like this. And that's going to bring up the command line interface. And we can execute commands here such as show tables. And you can see at the moment this DuckDB database has no tables. Now how do we run the UI? It's very simple. So let's quit out of the DuckDB terminal. And again we can run the DuckDB command. And this time we can pass the dash UI flag. Now if we do this what's going to happen is it's going to open a new window. And you can see that opening just now. If we go back to the terminal here you can see a user interface has been started on localhost on port 4213 and below that we have terminal access again. And if we go to the browser you can see we have the welcome page here. The DuckDB UI is an interactive workspace for ad hoc querying and data exploration with DuckDB. And on the left hand side we have two sections. We have a notebook section here at the top left. And these are collections of SQL queries that you can run interactively. And we also have attached databases and that makes it easy to store and query your data. Now if we start DuckDB without specifying a database, we get an in-memory database and that's a temporary database that only exists for the duration of the session. With DuckDB that's the default but you can also have a persistent database and that's stored on a file on the disk. Now what we're going to do is click this button at the bottom here and that's going to take us to a notebook called DuckDB UI Basics. So this is going to show us some basics of the DuckDB UI. So this is a notebook and these have cells and these cells are executable. So for example, I can execute this cell here with control enter and we get some information here on the right hand side. If we go down here, there's a cell on loading data. So we can create a table from an external file in DuckDB. So the statement here is to create or replace a table called trains. And the data in that is coming from this parquet file here. So let's execute that and see what happens. You can see the interactive execution and then we get back a count here at the bottom. I'm going to make this slightly bigger so we can see it better. The count is about 380,000 records. We can also explore column diagnostics. So for example, if we execute this here, on the right hand side we get this column explorer and we get some information about the columns in that trains table. So for example, the date column, if we click that here, we get more information and we get some very useful statistics about that column. For example, the earliest and latest date in the column and the distribution of the records. And if I go up here and minimize this, we can click any number of these columns, for example, station code, and we get some information as you can see here. So it's very useful here to have the column explorer. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this, the final cell that we have here, you can see the statement here is to copy from the trains table to a CSV file. We can then query that CSV file directly. So if I execute this just now, we get the query results displayed below and you can see the table at the bottom and we have the column information on the right hand side. So that's very useful and these notebooks are nice and interactive. They allow you to very quickly view the query results for your DuckDB tables. And you can see on the left hand side the databases and the tables within those databases that you have 
in your DuckDB system. Now if we click the trains table here, again we get that column information here. This is some just some generic information about the table. So we can see each column name as well as the data type for that column. And if we look at the graph here, this is a histogram of the service IDs. We also have the row count over time for the date. And we have the number of distinct values when you have these fields such as type, station code and station name. Now I mentioned before that notebooks allow you to organize your work and your queries into named notebooks. So we can actually create a new one here. So I'm going to do that just now. And let's just give this a name of train data. And what we can do is add a cell here and we can add our SQL queries to the cell. So for example, select all from trains is going to give us all of the rows in that DuckDB table. And if we look at one of the columns here, for example, the type column, you can see that this has a number of the same values here and we might want to do a query, for example, to get the distinct values from that column. So select distinct type from the trains table is going to give us back a list of the distinct values in that column. So we're just going to finish the video with a couple of aggregated queries over this type column. What we might want to do here is group by that type column. So I'm going to add a group by statement here. And as well as the grouping, we're going to change the selection here. So we're going to get the type itself. And we might want a count of the number of records with that type. So we're selecting the type and the count of all of the records with that type. And let's give that an alias of type count. And let's execute this and see what we get back. So we can see that each type has a number of records here. And one other statement we could add here is an order by clause. And we could order by that type count column in descending order. So let's execute this. And you can see we get the one with the most records at the top of the right hand side column. So sprinter is the type that has the most records. And this might be useful for some kind of analysis that you're doing. So you can consolidate these queries into these interactive notebooks. So this is the big benefit of the DuckDB UI. We get a very nice reactive way to look into the tables that we have in our DuckDB database and also to see information about the databases and the tables within them and also the columns in those tables. And finally, if we copy this SQL statement, what we can do is go back to the terminal that we have here and that's where we executed this command, DuckDB, and then we pass the dash UI flag. Once you do that, it's going to launch the UI in the browser, but we also get terminal access here. So we can just paste a query into this terminal. So I pasted that query that we wrote in here and I think I need to fix some of these. So we need a space here and a space here. Let's try executing that and you can see we get back the result set. So of course it's still possible to execute queries in the DuckDB terminal. But I think most people would agree that this new UI feature here, that offers much nicer functionality and it's just in general better to query the database using this. So that's all for this video about the DuckDB UI. I think this is a wonderful addition to an already excellent tool. And I'm excited to start using this in my own projects. If you've enjoyed this content and found it useful and you want to support the channel, check out this coffee page that we have just below the video. And I'll leave links to all of these resources just below the video as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.